Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. Ooh, hello, hello, hello. And folks, getting away from the community replay to a more monthly replay, this is the monthly tournament. Rank, who do we have today on Orsha East? On the left-hand side in the blue, we have Kurz from the Foxes clan, playing as the second Hungarian, I believe, tank division. Anyway, they have a Maverick income. Right-hand side in red, we have Snardek playing the 7th Mechanized Core, also we have a Maverick income. Interesting. You'll tell him what the foxes will say, but you won't notice the fact that Star Deck over here is in fact a duke. Mm-hmm. Maybe over hmm. Rakish? You know, if that's the case, I'm actually really, really looking forward to the second part of that movie coming out, but now it's not for another year, and the, there's a piece of me that's just kind of crying on the inside. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm giving moisture to the dead, man. What can I say? Um, <laughs> we are seeing an incredible breakout over here from the 7th, as well as over here from the 2nd, uh, Hungarians. This is going to be kind of one of those knockdown drag out fights. Not because of all the crazy artillery or tanks or things like that, but just because of just the, the wide breadth of material. Yeah, I mean, both sides have enough medium as well as heavy tanks available to really make this work out and to be a brawl. I do I do kind of respect Stardike buying Matilda. He, holy crap, has a lot of Matilda 2s he's brought off the bat. That's more of a like seed investment in a direct impacts on the front line here. That's just as fun. When you say when you say seed investment, you mean soon will be put down underneath the sod, I think, right? Yes. Yo, oh, yes, yes. That type of seed. I and you know, like a like a bank investment. Those are the only oh, no, types absolutely. of seed investments I would make. That's fair. Couldn't say about other people. That's fair. Well I mean we can't technically say other types of seeding because you know that's technically illegal, but it's besides the point. <laughs> no no file sharing happens here. No. Um down south, actually, we're going to see, you know, middle south, we're going to see a tiger just beat up on a Dushka carrier, which is feels like kicking a puppy. Yep. And there's something very, very wrong about that. Like, truly heinous. Like, I, that guy should be ashamed of himself. War is hell. It is. Uh, war is also an ME-210 coming down to bomb the ever-living bejesus out of a 76-2. And it's about three acres with it, so. Yeah, and getting a pretty good hit. And apart from that, it's been a pretty mostly standard opener. Actually, more interesting with like Kurz trying to push a bit more offensively in the center center of the map, or like the northern center on the hill. Like Kurz is a pretty scratch defense here, which is actually going to benefit Stardex slow Matilda push. Because <laughs> by the time his infantry reach the front line, the Matildas are going to be here in time to provide fire support. Yeah. It's it's a it's a strange thing. Now there is still a Turan over here. I'm not suggesting that Turan is going to be the, <laughs> the the rock of Gibraltar upon which this entire push breaks. Um, but it'll delay long enough, I think, to bring in something heavier. Perhaps maybe a P4. I don't think it'd be the other Tiger necessarily, but it'd be enough time to bring in something else in. Yeah, because also as well, usually on this map from Curse's side. You usually want to try to push very heavy on this hill position, because obviously once you capture the hill, you can just put down lanes of fire and completely capture it. But by going for the more central push, which is definitely a little bit more risky and so far hasn't paid off for him, he's losing, you know, he's, he's going to give himself a lot of trouble fighting over that hill later on, especially without Matilda 2 spam, because that's around 2 is going to be a little bit outgunned when it comes to that. Yep. And that one Lovich over here is just not going to be the most happy of campers either, to be oh. fair. Um, the first Matilda is coming on in. You might say that all these Matildas are waltzing. Uh, but thankfully, there is no billabongs or whatever the heck other things are going on here. Of course, there are all the, no other Tarant here either. So, oh. It's really going to, I think, for Kerr's come down to his Tiger and Pack 40 play, because that does give him the long range advantage by quite a bit. Because if he can, like, rear down this town and capture it, that's a pretty good position. You still have to worry about the hill up north, which sucks, but at least you can get infantry into the town position and potentially put a bit more pressure down south. Well, and put pressure up to the north as well. You could kind of put guys in either T intersection and really be a lot, do a lot of interdicting, whether it's coming from the east or troops coming from the east going towards the north as well, so... Lots of opportunities here. Unfortunately for him, he's not going to be able to take advantage of them for quite some time. Because the 7th mech over here is just going to capture every single flag known to mankind. Yeah. 
though its northern push is going fantastic for Stardeck, he's traded effectively, a lot of his dudes are still alive, and that Matilda 2 blob is going to be a pain in the ass to deal with, you know, seeing Kurz, you know, upgun his tanks a little bit, getting those stug, a stug 3G, and he really needs some, you know, proper medium or heavy tank firepower to deal with the, you know, comparatively, I'd say, quite heavy British Matilda 2, especially for the time period. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the, the two-pounder one, so don't expect it to be super crazy at killing heavy tanks. But for the later Hungarian stuff, this is not too much of an issue. The Stoke 3, on the other hand, technically should be pretty strong against a lot of this. Yes. Yeah, so if he can definitely get the range advantage as well, he can just start picking off those Matildas one by one. Actually, what I'm fascinated by is the IS-122 in the middle of the map, because if that Tiger goes down, I think the entire momentum flips in the opposite direction. Yeah, and the momentum has already been slowing down quite a bit here from Kersey. Support guns and just bringing in enough infantry to hold out Central Town has worked really well for him. An ISU-122 can, I'd say, pretty easily kill that Tiger in a long-range fight. It does have a heckin' big gun. And both have the heckin' same amount of armor. Indeed. Now, the Terran coming over here to the northern side, he immediately goes down, courtesy of that nice little M1 bazooka. So that's going to be rather deadly, and the Stug 3, I think it's going to run afoul of that Razvedka inside that church, unless they said a Mod on Lovich over here is able to put enough fire power on it to take out said church. Yep. Make it more holy, as it were. Hmm. And to the north, and to the north of the river, well, those guys are just kind of chilling. I mean, and I completely understand why, too. I mean, there's no reason for you from east to west or west to east. You want to hold the bridges, and that's really all you care about. Yeah, for start, like, he just needs to hold that central position of the town, and then preferably try to lock down the north and the center as well, so you can capture out one flag where the, like, the, you know, the free infantry blob is. And then mm -hmm. he pretty much just, you know, use the hill position to cut down anyone trying to push on through. I do want to note, while we looked away, the Tiger has, in fact, died, the ISU-122. Down south as well, there's an SU-85 that's killed another Terran, but there's been a rather plucky push from the Hungarians down here, and they've been very, very effective, I would argue. Yeah, being able to use the tree cover to his advantage. He also has a Tiger all the way down here as well, which can provide a decent amount of fire support if the SU-85 does decide to show himself a little bit. So, yeah, this might be a good idea for Curse to just continue investing some more infantry to hook himself around the southern part of the forest. And yet, I think he kind of misplayed the, the line of sight over there, which I can understand. But I feel like if you have hung, you know, Hungarian troops, I don't care how wonderful your anti-tank grenade is. You need to play very, very conservatively in this trees. Cut line of sight, break it, and let's just go back into the trees. There's no reason to be aggressive. Now, northern side as well, going back over there real quick, we are going to see the stroke has gone down. And this Matilda is charging at them. It's like an angry rhino or a water buffalo. It's kind of ponderously engaging all of these Lovichs as they fall, fall back. Oh. But because it's a British infantry support tank from 1940, they weren't smart enough to put... High explosive cells in it, so that uh, one best of machine gun is gonna have to do a lot of work. That was always one of those things for me that was just a weird concept. Because tanks were always like that. Mm. Yeah. I think, if I recall, it's because the high explosive load on the two pounder shell wasn't that large to begin with, so they just never bothered. It's like, ah, oh, the machine gun would be fine. It, it wasn't fine. Well, yeah, because that's one of the things, too, because since it was the, the two-pounder, the late two-pounder at that point, it was a different kind of bore overall. It was kind of, I want to say, almost like the predecessor to the Little John kind of idea. Yeah, the, the, little, the Little John is basically just a two-pounder, but with a thingy on the front to make bullet go scree so it goes faster. <laughs> yes. It's like I mean, the, the Hot the... Reels um, booster track, you know? You know oh, exactly what I'm talking about, right, Khan? The Hot Reels booster track so the car can do the loop-de-loop. I, I don't want to say that I do, because at that point I'm really dating myself. No, I absolutely know what Good. you're talking about. <laughs> I was going to say. That's a lot John, baby. That's a lot John. Please, man, if you know what a skip it is, those are, those came out when I was a kid. Like, God, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how old I am. <laughs> Back in the days of the American Empire. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, MG-34, actually, to the northern side. It looks like with the death of any kind of heavier vehicles that the superiors in the Vazvedkas think it's time to go from east to west and make start their march on Berlin. Um, and they're going to be able to do it, too. The one squad of Arcos over here are not going to be able to hold them back. Yes, sir? Yeah, and just looking back at this for first uh, 10 minutes, the A phase, this has definitely been a pretty big dub so far for Stardeck. He's been trading effectively, he's got very good geogra geographical ground up north, and he's slowly starting to grind his way up north here. There's not a whole lot here from Kurz to really do too much. I still think Kurz made a bit of a mistake not trying to push that town earlier and just shut it down. Instead, he needs to try to make something happen down south. It seems like what he's going to try and do here is he has a decent amount of troops stationed around his forest. Well, I do have to say it's kind of funny. Did you see that nice little uh, pyre burning to the northwest of the Turan? Up north? Down oh. south. Right by the, so the tiger, they have the two Turans, and there's a oh. pyre to the northwest right there. Oh. That was 140 points of Hero Panther that took one shot, missed, and got murked on the, on the return fire. So yeah, that's, such... that's, that's painful. Such is the life of bringing any sort of heavy tank in a 1v1. Or get nope. shot once and die. Yeah, they get shot down because they're overzealous, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta play hard to get, and those anti AT guns will get jealous. That's how, that's how it works. Now, for those of you out there who had absolutely no idea what the heck I was just quoting, that was the Bards from mix a lot. <laughs> um, but, that's besides the point. Stokes, in the meantime, on the northern side, they're gonna start to engage. I think some of the superiors moving over open ground. And it feels like the Hungarians are really kind of stirring themselves. It's phase B. They're like, you know what? We're both up 170. We get it. It's time to push back, though. Yeah. The one advantage here for Rob Kurz in regards to not trading effectively, it feels like, is the point mm -hmm. value isn't really all that bad. It's still pretty even Stevens. And he does now have, yeah, those two stuck 3Gs, which if he doesn't, you know, bullseye rush him into the Matilda 2s, they can provide a lot of value here. Yes, indeed. Technically, the, the Matilda should not be able to kill them from the front. But you know. No, not at long range. If they get close, there's always the possibility. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I if I put my gun up against your chassis and I fire, first of all, I better be buying you dinner first. But second of all, yeah, I probably should be able to kill you. Mm. Not quite the same with this PE3 over here. It's going to obliterate the front squad of uh, Lovich's on that hilltop. But nonetheless, pretty strong. The one in good position here from Sardak is he has pulled the Matildas off the hillside and placed them more deeper on the hill. So he's eventually going to have to force Curse to move the Stugs up onto the hill, and that's when the Matilda can, of course, use their shorter reins to get yeah, advantage. That's true. I think for me, I was trying to think about how the Hungarians push back against this. The only thing I can think of is if they were willing to donate a 75 mil or two sneak it on in. I think they still have one or two left. I don't think all of them are been killed just yet. Kind of sneak it on from the outside skirts of that town and maybe just get some sneaky beaky sniping on through. Or off map. Honestly, uh, that town That's is so just true. asking to get obliterated from an off map artillery strike. You know, we actually haven't seen a whole ton of off map this entire week, at least certainly thus far. Um, and looking at both the decks today, I mean, there's a 203 that should be called in any time now, I would think. Ooh, the Nimrod. Man, I, again, such a soft spot in my heart for the Nimrod. Yeah, I do like Kurz. Great job. Every single anti-aircraft piece is a Nimrod. You picked the correct choice, like, five times over. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I think I probably would have waited to... Whatever, not important. Anyway... <laughs> I said, there's only so many Nimrods you can keep around, and to wait until Phase B might be a little bit better, but I understand why. Um, but yeah, the Nimrod, love this thing. Not just because it can technically kill tanks, but just because it's just, it's... I feel like mobility in this game is, is key. You have to be mobile consistently. We didn't see that on Tuesday, we're seeing it much more today, and we're seeing the effect of that positively. Indeed. And we are finally seeing that 105 off map being brought out here from Foxes or Kurs. He does have a decent amount of infantry being brought into position. It seems like, yeah, he's not going to rest him in yet, keep him in transport. If he times this right, he can get that foothold back onto that hill. And that should really start steering the game to his favor. It should. It should. We'll see if that if it all works out, Cotton. It's a very, very dangerous opportunity here. 
but he's got to make a move quick because he's been down pretty much the entire time in terms of tickets. No, he's charging for regardless. I do not agree with this, Cotton. Oh, he really should have rated for the off map. Watch the off map come in and get hit by some crazy line of sight thing. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, mm. yeah, 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 I know. It's a little bit forward. You're going to blow up the front. But even, uh, not even that. I mean, I understand why he's putting it there. I was actually just thinking about the speed of the troops because 20, you know, 20 seconds and these guys have that, you know, the hot, nice little rinky dink foot slogging speed of their Chevrolet legs. But I think my concern, ooh, interesting. SG 43 unmasked itself, MG 34 engages. Uh, I was just thinking about whether or not they had enough time to cover that distance. They actually might have just enough time. Mm hmm. Yeah, one of the Matildas is going to avoid the off map artillery strike. Duran Run's going to be coming on round. Maybe get a hit. Other 105 off map. Oh, and. Ugh. He, he lost it and he only got one barrage. It's not exactly ideal, yeah. And so far, it's not the best barrage either. He is no. back to a 12 12, so that, that's a positive point. But that's about the only positive point I can make coming back here so far. Yeah. He. I feel like once his barrage is over, he will be able to move up his troops and get, you know, that first little defense line of the town, but still the... I see... Oh yeah, his troops do have some anti-tank, including bazookas. Yes. yes. So, I think the bazooka troops, if they get into a position, can probably finish off the Matildas. Also, please, it's a, it's a Raccavetto, which for some reason just turned yes. into some kind of Italian AT weapon, as opposed to a Hungarian one, but... Uh, yeah. Something. It is. It's certainly something. Now, what that something is, I'm not 100% sure, but it certainly is something. Uh, down south, in the meantime, actually has been minor scruffles over here. Maybe a spot of bother or two. Even more so as the 152 starts obliterating different parts of the forest, looking for something. As to what that is, I'm not 100% sure. But attack groundings have been happening. And Tango this on Miki is right moving forward to start taking out some of the out pickets over here for the Hungarians, so... I, you know, they're, they're heavy tanks. I don't know if they really want to stay there for the long term. Yeah, it's honestly a very weird call-out and positioning for those heavy tanks. That's a that's a lot of bloody firepower, right? Yeah, but they're not really in a good position, first off being close quarters, to affect the battle. And really, even though, of course, being out in the open is scary, even as a heavy tank, you think it'd be somewhere a little bit up north a bit, so you can actually use our long reins to your advantage. I think he's scared of the ISU and the SU. Oh, yeah. As you saw before, I mean, he's lost two heavy tanks to long-distance sniping. I, I understand that, being a little bit kind of cautious about that. Indeed. No, that's, that's a very good point. But what does he... What's he going to do with the tanks now? He needs more infantry, more than anything down south to try to... You know, make sure his tanks don't get bazookered. No, you're absolutely correct on that. Actually, I was watching to the northern side of here as well. We actually did just see an ammo explosion, I think, on, was it 122 or was it SU-85? Either way, there's an ammo explosion to the northern side. SU-85, there's a ton of Luftwaffe material. ju 88s coming on and obliterating some material. We'll see bombs away, tons of bombs away. We might see at least some suppression over here. Nope, they're dropping along. Mm-hmm. Doing okay, forcing some of the SU-85s back for the time being. And we're seeing another decent push here from Kurz with all his Hungarian troops to try to retake that hill. And honestly, even though Stardex is losing his position, he's losing it with dignity. He doesn't have a whole lot of troops here, but he's forced Kurz to invest a heavy amount of points to dig him out of his hilltop position. And it's working well for him, he's got that 13 Tandra almost into C phase here, and the rest of the map is still like, pretty comfortably in his position. He's not really threatened much anywhere else. Well, the kind of curious thing is that there wouldn't have needed to have been such a heavy investment if that artillery strike had been dropped 150 meters west. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe that one 105 shell barrage dropped a little bit further to the west is a completely different game. But, you know, Hindsight is twenty twenty, and God Vision is more like 25. Yeah. Um, so, you know, very, very harsh of me to say. 
Now, down south, you actually are seeing some infantry being kind of pushed up together, but there's also some Soviets being thrown in here as well as kind of a scouting force. And I think both the Panther and the Tiger and that Nimrod kind of sitting in that uh, back seat there. These guys, like you said, bit of a wasted investment here. Yeah, I mean, they're probably enjoying the serene countryside. It is, well, 105 millimeter cells that explode around them. It really, you know, increases the ambience and Belarusia. But yeah, what's... It just feels like, I don't know, it's just a race of points, like you said. When you're looking at it like a 90 seconds worth of income, it's kind of a curious thing to see it deployed so passively. Mm -hmm. Now, the 149 artillery piece, that piece over here is actually... Well, it's set enough to be rather scrumptious. It's been, it's been pretty good so far. It's got a lot of suppression. It's got a lot of just, like, unit model kills. Hasn't picked off any squads yet, but you know what? If he keeps that that Vazvedka suppressed, that's a good thing for them. He's got to hurry back though, because yeah, there we go. Okay, very very lucky for the Tiger and the Panzer to get to see them first. Yeah, yeah, very effective strike, especially with how choke pointy that area of the map can be. He got some very good hits. Speaking of strikes, the two hundred three is actually gonna have a TOT coming down in four seconds on that town on the hillside. If you want to check that out, ooh, that's, that's a so beautifully juicy. placed one beautifully placed now first shell tells you everything you need to know about this oh okay so we'll, we'll see about the, the limits on this one more suppression than kill thus far but regardless well struck yeah honestly for Stardak he's just buying time on this hill I think eventually he's going to get pushed off it just due to sheer rate of numbers but he has a decent second defensive line that one flag is in a pretty good geographical position for him to hold if he can just keep forcing Claire's to spend a lot of manpower here to try to take it, with that 1311, especially in the sea phase where both sides have been boring comes, it works well for him. But down south, actually, we're seeing the Tiger shifted on forward. Is the Panther dead? The Panther's still alive. But looking down south, you're actually seeing the Tiger is engaging. T-34-76s and SU-76Is. This force is actually turning slowly into a Hungary position. They're, they're hungry for more. Yeah, there is dangerous to use the heavy tanks in this engagement, but frankly, he needs to get some bloody value out of him. And it is as he gets in the valley, forcing the T-34 and the SU-76I back for the time being. And he has a lot of infantry to cover in front, so it shouldn't get bazookaed. And if he can take his position, he can, well, taking out wait, one wait. Yeah, Well, you, you you know what will happen? They're well, going to get Katyusha. This little Katya is actually going to speak. We see two of them are going to start to engage right oh. now. And oh, he's got holding them, fire. fire. No, fire, please. No, he, he's trying to sync him up. I, I kind of like it, actually. And looking at the spread patterns. I know, he's Miss Micro. And he's going to, yeah. He's going to hit the Tiger, but the most infantry out of the, uh, the area. We watch the northern side, ME-210 doing a nice little artillery strike. A third, excuse me, a second rather, not a third, a second 203 being dropped onto that town. This one's even juicier than the first one. Yep, well done there. But the little Katya is speaking. I have to see what she has to say. And... It's supposed too late. Uh, he and one tiger's not going to enjoy it, that's for sure. He might get a lucky kill. He might not. Well, and I do love the fact that that Nimrod has now showed himself to be as wonderful as it is. The PE-3 is going to come on in, and Nimrod should be able to at least get some panic. No. And the infantry blob falls apart here. Yeah. Very, very well done. Yeah, Bind Sardek, once again, valuable time. He really just has to play in the defense. There's not a whole lot he'll gain from pushing down south, as is a decent geographical distance between him and the next flag. So he can just throw in, you know, Tango Distant Eadki, CQC tanks, and just make it a pain in the ass to trade. Oh, well, that's because his man to, you know, get at 1311. I believe that's because of up north. Yes, has to flip that flag, and all the way far up north, he's close again to reflipping that flag to his side. Yes, he is. Now, the mildly amusing thing behind this is that, even though they're 13 11, apparently he was far enough behind that they were like, eh, we don't know how long it's going to take before he actually loses, but we're not going to calculate it. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, but there is a little bit of Soviet infantry being deployed aggressively to kind of go and take this back. 
thing is, is that now it's the Soviets' turn to pay the cost of blood. Yeah, yeah. There's all those plans are forced to be able to trade quite effectively. And there's really not a whole lot here up north. I'd, same thing for Kurs as well in terms of infantry, but it's really coming down to the tank fight's priority at this point. It is, it is. Also, the, the cross map 149 shells, uh, impressive, a little bit less destructive than I think that he might have hoped, but um, that's what happens, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Down south, we actually are seeing successful shove. These uh, Tuzers over here, the Tuzer Tiks, are able to push back the tankers, at least for the moment. Now, I would like to see the Panther and the Nimrod maybe moved another 200 meters east to maybe get some long distance kind of chicanery. His T-34, he kind of moves around the forest, but, you know, unfortunately, it's not going to be happening here. So, Nimrod moving forward. Panther apparently content to just kind of sit back and, and uh, browse during the heat of this particular day. Yeah, he, he's letting the, you know, tiger draw all the fun. Honestly, I, kind of actually a smart move, all jokes aside, because you all you really need is, like, one heavy tank on the front line to make a difference. So, you're just kind of hedging your bets. Tiger eventually gets blown up, and the Panther's like, ah. Oh, Guess I'd be the heavy tank now. You know, technically I'm an MBT. Who, who knows what to really classify the Panzer? You can get into how long arguments with yet. So let's just, let's just keep it as a heavy tank. You know, it feels like you've been very frisky this week in terms of lecture series. Mm -hmm. I think at some point we need to have Rang After Dark, uh, a late night lecture series combining all the fun, flame, and destruction we can lay our hands on. But We'll keep that, we'll put that in the back burner for right now, to keep the whole flame joke going. It is 13-11 in the meantime. And despite ME-210s and JU-88s dropping bombs, the northern position continues to hold strong. Although I think we might see a crumbling here at long last. The Katyusha's being rotated, but they don't have any munitions. Yeah, I does have a supply truck up north here, which I believe is... Oh yeah, supply truck's actually going all the way to the front, so... Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's going to the front, to the Katushas. Oh, because the Katushas are getting quite close here, which makes sense for rocket artillery. But no, you're right. Uh, Kurz is slowly turning his back to his favor. I mean, you're seeing just up north as more blue stuff than his red stuff, because he's been actually trading effectively. Now, if only he has some more artillery. If only. Unfortunately, he doesn't have any more artillery. <laughs> He had two pieces, and um, they had both gone to the great uh, firing range in the sky at this point. Actually, it's not true. Forgive me. The 149 is still down south, but I just, I'm waiting. I want to have more. More. Always more. For well, the 149 over here, again, another unsung hero. I feel like, again, on map artillery doesn't get the press it deserves. Full stop. No, you're right. Especially. Heavy artillery guns like that, because that 149 is pretty cost-effective in regards to just the amount of stuff you can kill and just the amount of pressure it can put on the map. Especially in, once you get to these grind fights where the enemies is a big blob of infantry, having a big honking shell drop on top of them is a good way to motivate them to leave their current position. I think the fascinating thing for me is going to be what happens. Ooh, P4 goes down. Ooh, that was tight. That was perfect hit. I want to see what happens if the Katusha is actually get caught out. Because I think that could potentially happen here. Yeah. It's going to come down to this big infantry spam. Of course, Hungarian infantry. Absolute champ. Especially the second uh, Panzer runs. Is, yeah, they get MG42s, which is quite nice. But, um, yeah, I wasn't say. The problem right now is that most of the infantry is stunned, so this is going to give Stardeck a vital time to bring in reinforcements to set up the next defensive line on the hill. Well, while I said the next defensive line on the hill, down south, there's still technically, I think the Tiger can just shift around, the Panther can shift on through, and for the moment, yes, there's an ISU-122, and there's also an SU-85 being brought forward, but there's an opportunity. It is. He's just waiting for his Pioneer troops to come on in and clear out out for us before making any serious commitment. Uh, makes sense, yeah. 
SC-76 in the meantime is going to go and loft shells up on top of that kind of northern hill. We are going to see more ME-210 chicanery. Yes, where are they going for this time? They're going after the T-34-76. I suppose I understand that. It's not my first target priority here, but I suppose it makes sense. Uh, just trying to get that out of the battlefield, but it's decent amount of anti-air here. One is forced to fall back. The second one is going to get some... Oh, it doesn't even get the bombs off. The shame. Nope. So, yeah, it's the weird thing is the criticals take you pretty much immediately up to 100% stunning. So, mm -hmm. uh, Starkey DPs do go down over here just to the south of the river. So the Arkansas over here getting closer and closer and closer. And I'm actually kind of surprised. Oh, no, they're still technically reloading. Interesting. Oh, interesting, yeah. Interesting. Take a bloody long time to get those rockets back in order. And yeah, those Katusas are kind of useless now. Because... The position has been lost pretty much in that hill. It's that one stroke of DP near the tank of Desenitki, which is all that's left. We've got Panzer IVs here, reinforcements, more Hungarian troops to push their way through. Yeah, Kurz is finally going to be able to take his hill. Yes, he is. I was actually kind of wondering to a certain extent if the, if the Katyushas would have just been used as an opportunity to put pressure to kind of stop the bleeding, so to speak. Especially as the PE3 comes back back in and just gets more kills. So really, really well done there. Checking in down south, the infantry is folded as well. Panther has been shifted up and around. I don't know. The ISU is taking a very southerly position. He's trying to get sneaky peeky eyes on that tiger. Yeah. He's going to get into a pretty good defensive position in that light forest. And that panther's also in a good spot as well. He can move himself up a little bit in that light forest and... Basically have a nice angle of fire to cover that road. Not so much as an offensive measure, but more of a defensive fire to stop reinforcements. Well, it seems like the Tiger can somehow see the ISU. It's going to get your first shot as well. It's going to tell us everything about this engagement. Yep. Yep. And the Tiger is now extinct. We will mm -hmm. see no more of their like on this particular battlefield, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. All gone. <laughs> the Caduceus in the, the meantime, having suckled at the on a teat of the armory, have now bolting for the hills, and I think it's going to fall back across the river, turn around, and then fire rockets at the front line again. You see, one now driving back, they raved over to the stroke of DP, like, hey, we did our job, guys, see ya! And they're like, great, <laughs> you did nothing. And they just drove off. Like, you just took all us bastards. Exactly. We we have no ammunition. We just gave it to all the freaking Katyushas. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, yeah. Those Katyushas, just the poor reload time, they probably could have made a pretty decent impact, at least slowing down Kurz's kill push here, but I think the writing's pretty much on the rule. Kurz is at 15-9, and he is just, from a rather rocky start, this is now traded very effectively. Well, the weird thing here, too, is that Katusha is actually aiming to the northern side. And it's not because he wants to be able to actually take the position back. He's not going to take the position back. This is this is a stopgap measure. He's afraid. Mm -hmm. So we'll just defense to stall time. But he's now in a position where he needs to make a major offense. And yeah, it just, it just doesn't happen at this point in the match. The reserves have been tapped. Well, yeah, that's exactly what you, you you expect to hear is, yes, we use tube artillery as a defensive measure. That's when you know things are not going well. Mm -hmm. um, Tiger did go down to the south. The ISU is set to engage the, the panther and <laughs> kills the panther as well, because of course he does. Question here is, can the Nimrod technically kill him? And the technical answer is yes, he technically can. Will he? he? Can. Probably not. Yeah, has... a second Nimrod. I'm going to get more than one Nimrod together. That's what it is if you have a chance. There we go. Hmm. But no, yeah, Curse can just pretty much sit on this, uh, 15-9. Do you want to take us to a times two out of 15-30? Sounds like a plan. Times two. Okay, the northern side's kind of chilling, doing its thing. I almost do want to see the ISU get taken out by the Nimrod. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. No, I don't yeah, think Stardex is going to be uh, silly enough to get there within 200 meters, which is a shame. Because whenever, because the Nimrod has the same bloody uh, 
rocket breach loaded or muzzle loaded rocket that the uh, pack 36 has yeah they're kind of like going out of her for kind yeah. of thing yeah really i just the image of like probably a gunner has to like climb up onto the gun and just like slap it in the front yeah, and then he's got to go kiss it, paint it yellow, yep. and pray that it doesn't explode before he <laughs> fires the, the shell. Safety measures. Yeah, like, is there anything more orky than, yeah, you know what, this is not killy enough, let's go and put something else on the front of it. Mm -hmm. But there we go. Uh, Slutsky's, by the way, not Orshies, excuse me, folks. Uh, but Slutsky's over here it does finish with the fox saying victory, and Stardock unfortunately losing his crown. Um, KD... Not too much difference, although we did see that Curse definitely had some friendly fire. Oh, yeah. That's just the joys of Eastern Front. And then looking at kills here. Stroke the ISU. SVT. Where's the ISU? Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's good. That's good. And he lived to the end of the war. Yeah, good, good for him. Lived happily ever after in the Soviet Union. <laughs> Uh, the tiger on the other side is similarly kind of killy, although at the same time, this is one that was in the center early on and then getting picked off by the ISU. So, ooh, the 149. Four kills right there. Well done. Shockingly enough, Purse didn't have a lot of standout kind of units. It just was an overall ability to just kind of do relatively well. Yeah, like the Hungarian infantry are more... I mean, they do have some killy firepower, but they're more there to just absorb fire due to a big, beefy nature. And you just slowly but surely trade it efficiently. So, good job. Indeed. Well done. Well done. Any final thoughts there, sir? No. Well, folks, in that particular case, then, until next time, I'm Conover. I'm Rangru. Take it easy.